Le Maillot Jaune, or the Yellow Jersey, it is the most prestigious award that you can possibly win in the world of cycling, and it is awarded to the winner of the Tour de France. But how exactly do you win it? Hmm. In short, you'll win the Tour de France if you complete the entire course in the shortest time. But there is a scenario where that actually isn't the case, and it does get a little bit complicated. But please, bear with us, and we'll try and explain. It's free, is that freehand that's right there? Yeah. That's actually quite cool, isn't it? Do we need a start line? It's all in the tightness, isn't it? Just taking production up a notch. I don't think there's any notches left, to be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> For each of the 21 stages which generally make up the Tour de France, each of the riders within the race is given a time. Now, for individual time trials, that is the most simple. It's simply the time taken for each of the riders to go from the start house to the finish line. Things get slightly more complicated for a team time trial because the team is allocated the time of the fifth rider across the line. So that's why the teams will make sure that they cross the line together with at least five at the front. However, if a rider is more than one second behind that fifth rider, then they will be given their own time to go from the start to the finish. On mass start road stages, things aren't quite as simple as you may think. So let us break it down a little bit for you. Now, quite simply, the first rider to cross the line will get given the time that's taken for him to complete the course from A to B. All right. Now, as will all of the riders in the same group as him, unless there is more than a one second gap between two consecutive riders, as we've illustrated here with our little cycling figurines. Yeah, and if this is the case, then the person who is behind that one second gap will be allocated his personal time to complete the entire course. And everyone in the group of that distance rider will also be given the same time as him. And that same thing applies to every gap of more than one second that you have all the way down the bunch. Now this is why we see such a big fight amongst the riders who want to win the yellow jersey on the flat sprint stages to stay towards the front. In our example of just five, the time gaps wouldn't be significant. But if a yellow jersey contender loses concentration and comes in a 90th place, and the rider in 80th place has allowed that one second gap to open. It's not just about that one second, it's about how long it is from the first rider to cross the line to the rider who has left that gap. And that could be as much as 15 or 20 seconds. Also though on flat stages, there is something called the three kilometer rule. And what that means is that if there is a crash within that last three kilometers, then anybody involved in the crash or directly affected by it will be allocated the same time as the first person to cross the line from the group that they were in before that crash took place. Now, how this is applied is at the discretion of the UCI Common Sairs, it's the cycling's governing body, and it does not apply to summit finishes or time trials. So, by looking at that, we can ascertain that generally the GC in the Tour de France is shaped by mountain stages and individual time trials, which is where we generally see the bigger time gaps open up. But that's not to say it's vitally important to keep switched on and concentrated, especially if you're a GC rider, on the flat stages so as not to leak any valuable seconds. Now, along with the times which we've been talking about, which are given to each of the rides on each of the stages, we also have to factor in bonus seconds. Something, in fact, which ASO, the organisers of the race, have experimented with getting rid of altogether in recent years. But as of 2016, if you cross the finish line first, you will get 10 seconds time bonus. Second, you will get six. And third, you will get four. Although it's important to know also that this only applies to the mass start road stages and not to time trials. Now it's worth mentioning at this point, intermediate sprints. Now in the past, at various intermediate sprints throughout the course, you could get time bonuses. They're now gone. So you can only get points towards the sprints classification or the green jersey at intermediate sprints in 2016. I will explain a little bit more about the points classification in another video. If you are lucky enough, or perhaps more accurately strong enough to pick up some of these bonus seconds, then they will be taken off your time for the stage and therefore your cumulative time during the Tour de France. And what that means is that you don't necessarily win the Tour de France by covering the number of kilometres of that particular year in the shortest time. That is if the person behind you has kept close enough and picks up enough bonus seconds to leapfrog you to the win. Now, although it's mathematically possible, we don't recall it happening in the Tour de France as yet. The final consideration is the opposite of time bonuses, and it's time penalties. Now, although these are quite rare, they can be given to riders for a variety of rule infringements. Now, let's take, for example, the 2013 Tour de France on outdoors. 
Now, Chris Froome was penalised 20 seconds for taking a gel from his team too near to the finish, which wasn't allowed. Now, although Chris went on to win the 2013 Tour de France, it's definitely something to consider when you look back at how the race was won. Well, clear as mud then, eh? But hopefully we have gone some way to explaining some of the intricacies that go into giving a rider his final time when he reaches Paris at the end of the Tour de France. Admittedly, it can be quite hard to get your head around all of them when you first get into cycling, or actually indeed, when you've been into it for quite some time. Now for some more Tour de France videos, how about clicking just up there for our Tour de France playlist, or for some interesting facts about the Tour, we've got 10 of them, I think there might be a few more in there somewhere, click just down here for our top 10 Tour de France facts. Yeah, or to subscribe to the Global Cycling Network, which is free, just click on the globe. I'm just going to go over that. Top of the world. <laughs>